This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We're going to take a look at rational expressions with exponents. And for this example, we're going to take a look at a complex level problem. All right, so let's start by looking at this problem. All right, now what makes this one complex is that we have a fraction. We've got common bases, and we're also raising this to yet another exponent as well. So there's a few things going on with this problem all in one. So I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process that we could use to move forward. So the first thing I like to do is always clean up what's inside the parentheses, and I'm noticing that I've got some like bases and I'm dividing them. That's what this big fraction bar means. So what I do is I go through my my rules and I use them one at a time. So what I'm going to do is use rule two. So rule two says if I'm dividing like bases I'm going to subtract those exponents. Okay so uh, this is where it is going to get a little bit tricky. So if you really keep in mind here that I'm not doing anything with this cube on the outside. I'm not doing anything with this 4. So all I'm doing is I'm uh, simplifying these x's and y's at the moment. All right, so what happens when I take the 3 and the 7 and I divide them, right? Those are powers on like bases. Well, according to this, I subtract. So 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Okay, same thing here. 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Okay, so this is our first step, and we used rule 2. Now, for our next, I'm going to use rule, let's see, I've got a power to a power, I'm going to use rule 3. So rule 3 says, if I have a power to a power, I multiply those powers and I keep the same base. So just keep in mind, remember that there is a power here on the 4 and is 1. So I'm multiplying all those exponents by 3. Okay, so here are my new exponents. Alright, so what did we do? We used rule number 3. So next on the list, we should recognize the fact that we have negative exponents. So that's what I want to do, take care of. So according to rule 4, if I have a negative exponent, what I'm supposed to do is change the exponent to a positive and to move the term, which actually here is the base. All right, so in other words, I'm going to leave the... Uh, and actually, there's no powers here on the outside anymore. I don't need to write these parentheses. So I'm going to leave the f, f. I'm going to leave the 4 cubed alone. I'm going to take those 12 x's and move them down to the denominator because they're in the numerator. So notice I changed the sign to a positive, the uh, exponent. They actually, the sign there, change it from negative to positive. Same thing here. So when you change that power, to the opposite, you have to also move it across from the numerator to the denominator. Okay, so that takes care of all our special properties and rules. So the only thing left for us to do is to use the power here to kind of clean this up. We could leave it this way, but it's strange to do that. So we're actually going to take 4 and cube it. So that means 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. And there's nothing we could do with these. Uh, we cannot combine them because they are different bases. You can't do anything when they're different bases. They have to be like bases to be able to do anything. And there you go. So this looks like it was a one, two, three, four step problem. All right, we're going to take a look at one more example. And this one I'm going to move a little bit quicker through. And I'm not going to be uh, is uh, uh, flashy with all the graphics. 
So I'm just going to take it through and run through an example using this problem. Okay, and let's say we've got a let's say we got a cube this one. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to do is clean up inside the parentheses. So what I'm going to do is take the let's see four minus six because I'm dividing. That is going to be a negative two. Let's see here. I'm going to subtract two five minus four because we're dividing. That's going to be y to the first. You don't need to write the first, but I'll do that. Of course, all this is in the numerator. And okay, so all I did is simplify inside the parentheses. Next, I've got powers to a power, so I'm going to multiply. I'm going to multiply three times one, three times negative two, and there is an exponent here. Now keep in mind that there really, if you think about this, there are almost like imaginary parentheses around that negative two. It is a negative two, and all of that negative two is to the first power. So what am I left with? I'm at negative two, three times one. I'm at x to the three times that, negative six. And I get three times one is three. Okay, next on the list, I'm going to take care of negative exponents. So the negative 2 cubed stays right where it's at. The y cubed stays right where it's at. Just the x's get moved to the denominator because of the negative exponent. All right, and last on our list, I'm going to cube this. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And there you have it. There's our second example. All right, so this is how we deal with rational expressions, rational meaning a ratio or a fraction, and we've got exponents that deal with them. Okay, make sure you go to mathguide.com. Check out our, all our other instructional videos, interactive quizzes, and text-based lessons. Take care.